from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. When I begin, when I begin this track of personal responsibility, will I start in the scriptures and will I start with my Savior so we can learn from the testimony, the proclamation of John the Baptist? Repent, yes. Be immersed, yes. Doing so knowing that is the path Messiah longs for you to take. It's a great phrase. It's a true phrase. Start with me. If I'm going to see a change happen, it's going to start with me. I need to look first at the man in the mirror. But who will that man look to first? Who will me begin with? Will me begin with my Savior? It's a question we all must ask. But number two, similar to John, will we speak of Jesus? When we talk about, when we proclaim the need for repentance and the need for salvation. Just think about this. How, how often do our conversations divulge into, well, what we need to see in the world is this. What our community needs is this. We need changes. We need improvements. We need success. We need growth. Do we ever have those conversations? Do we understand that true change will only happen because of the gospel, the good news, the life of Jesus? And do we actually say it? Point people back to the Savior who makes it possible. What about discussions about baptism? Do we quickly divulge into competition, into one-upping and gotcha lines when we're having those conversations about baptism, or do we rest in the Savior and show that it is essential and necessary because of who taught it to be essential and necessary, because of how he explained it? We will not make progress. We will not win souls just on the basis of one perspective winning out over another. We're not going to win people over by demands or even by elections or anything like that. But we will win people over when we show them from the Scriptures the humble but powerful King and Messiah, Jesus Christ himself. So when we speak of the need for repentance and we speak for the need for people to come to salvation Let's be sure every word reflects the beauty and the power of this glorious King, Jesus himself. What's the good news? If we're looking for good news as we go through the book of Mark, what is the good news we should see? And there are several things we could highlight, and I suppose we already have a few. But let's, let's close on this note. That even when warnings hurt, they are still good news. Even when warnings are painful to hear, even when warnings challenge us, they are still ultimately good news because they prevent us from loss. They prevent us from suffering. And they help us to find the path to life, to salvation, and to repentance. When Luke includes John's preaching, Luke chapter 3, he gives a little more detail about how John would talk about Jesus. And he said, His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor, to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. That's a strong message from John. John says there's going to be a separation when the Messiah comes. So it's time to repent. Then listen to Luke's words that follow that immediately. There's John's strong preaching. There's going to be a great separation. So be sure you follow the Son. Listen to verse 18. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. Luke called John's strong warning good news. Warnings hurt. Warnings are hard. The, the, the challenge to repent will exhaust us. It will wear us out. It will stress us out from time to time. But the progress we make in, in growing in the sight of God and in reaching souls because of that growth is ultimately good news and it's worth it. And how about you this morning? How's your soul in relationship to this good news? Do you hear the warning to repent, to change? Do you see the simple truth, the clear truth, the necessity of immersion, being buried in the waters of baptism? We know now from the rest of the New Testament that connects us to Jesus' death, where he then raises us, the same power that God raised him from the dead, he raises us to a new life, to walk in that life of repentance. If that's not the decision you've made to this point in your life, please don't let today end without making it. The water is ready, and we are ready. And we know deep down, if you've been thinking about it, you, you're ready. Decide now. Please come to him. Obey him. If you've 
obeyed the gospel, but you've been living outside of it. You've been living in sin, allowed sin to reign in your life instead of the king to reign in your life. Please know that today is the best day to make your life right with him as well. He longs to embrace you, and we do as well. We'll walk with you. We'll pray with you and love you every day forward. He's got a great message, a message that he promises forgiveness when we repent and obey him. If you need to do that today, if you need to do that today, please do it now as we sing. Let's save you. So a few announcements uh, before we dismiss. Um, tonight, uh, again, we're doing a kid Zoom. And uh, tonight we'll be talking about Jesus and him being baptized by John. And so uh, Joey and I will be leading that. Um, we've been enjoying our time with you. It is so much fun. And uh, I hope to see you there uh, tonight. And so that's at 5 o'clock. And we'll send out uh, the link for you to join us at that time. Um, also, this Friday, so... We sent out a message uh, this last week talking about meeting over Zoom uh, on a Friday to talk about that Tuesday night lesson of that week. And we sent out a PDF, a little file that you can talk about the lesson and answer questions for your family. Um, and so then at the end of the week, at Friday, we can get on Zoom and talk about that. Well, this week, what we're going to try to do on Friday is meet at the, here at the building at seven and uh, probably be maybe outside and, and sit around and we can talk about the lesson of this week uh, that we sent out on Tuesday. So that's Friday at seven. Also, uh, this is still in the works, but for Thursdays uh, with the teens, I'm working on something to where we can maybe meet safely and play games and also have Bible studies as well. And also we're working on another another way to serve uh, like the caravan that we've been doing. We're working on another way that we can serve and I think also uh, last Friday we talked about some, uh, some options to where we can serve more. So um, thank you so much. One last thing, uh, when we go out, uh, we don't want everybody to be clogged in in the foyer and everything, so when you go out, go outside and make sure that your discussions are had outside and make sure kids are, are close. So thank you so much, it was good to see you.
Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this beautiful day You have given us. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this opportunity to come out here today to, to worship Thee in the Spirit and in the truth. And Heavenly Father, uh, thank Thee uh, for the good lesson we've heard from Brother Joy this morning. And let us take this good lesson, apply it to our lives as we go about our daily duties, and many souls be saved by our works here at the, at the church and be with our members and thank thee for the our food we receive our clothes and shelter all the many blessings of life we have received and forgive us for our sins and bless the sick was mentioned and the doctors and nurses that care for them and heaven father we pray there'll be a vaccine soon that will stop this coronavirus and, and be with uh, the, those that's first responders that's taking care of the sick this uh, this time Heavenly Father, be with us as we leave here and guard, guide, and direct us until we meet again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.